Good morning, everybody. Uh, thank you for giving me a chance to be here to, uh, to share the vibration particular process we use at Bendix. The process itself is pretty simple. It's not complicated, pretty straightforward. But we have a good reason for that, because it's uh, simple. So we can just uh, do uh, as many as analysis as needed by just changing some parameters. Well, first time to be here and the first time to be a video table. So, uh, well, even my boss is not here, but I think we still got evidence. <laughs> well, first of all, I, uh, let me talk a little bit more about appendix. Well, if you find this board is not my fault, I pretty much just follow the, the template sent by the ENCO. So Bendix Commercial Vehicle Systems, uh, we have a headquarter in uh, Elyria, Ohio. Uh, we design and manufacture the air braking system. Uh, mainly for the heavy duty truck, uh, such as uh, the, the 18 wheels in the semi trailer, uh, school bus. And uh, sometimes we have uh, also do some for uh, military vehicles. And, uh, because uh, we're talking about assistance, so it means that we have uh, a lot of components inside. For, ex for example, well, we have a uh, air cleaner, air dryer. The purpose for that is uh, to uh, remove the moisture in the in the oil. You know, have a slack adjuster. We have a valve for controlling uh, the flow, you know, we have a compressor you know, for providing the uh, air source. You know, we have an air disc brake that provide a reliable uh, braking devices and also uh, develop the stability uh, control systems. So uh, in addition to the traditional mechanical parts, we also have some parts with uh, electronic devices, with, uh, electrical devices in integrated. Well, we call this one uh, megatronic. And as you know, everybody knows there is a trend of, uh, the, the in the industry. Well, because uh, we have uh, some of the extra components, electronic stuff. Electronic stuff is uh, pretty fragile. So it needs to be uh, secured. Well, our parts will be mounted on a heavy-duty truck. So it means vibration testing is pretty important. Right, appendix, we have a, physically we have a two, uh, two process. One is a sign sweep, another one is a PSD, or called a vibration, I mean a random vibration. The purpose for the, the sign sweep we can find the uh, natural frequencies, and uh, we can find uh, to test if, uh, if the, the parts can be uh, survive under the expected uh, vibration load. For PSD, a random vibration is a pretty much just like a, the power of a signal versus the frequency. And a good example would be the automobile right on the rough surface, so pretty much the profile of the load. In the appendix, we use ENCO to simulate these two process. I mean, this virtual prototyping. And uh, this is our process. Start from a 3D model. We pretty much everything will be, I mean, design the cast systems. And the engineer will provide a test criteria, and it is a sign sweep or a PSD. And uh, of course, uh, we have uh, engineer documents pretty much mentioned about the, the material properties. And uh, for this case, uh, we can also add uh, the bold pretensions, and the boundary condition, the test data, and what's the goal, and how, how long the part will survive. And uh, for process, 
from the FDA. Uh, pretty much, we can do the both pretension first. In the next step, we can do the model analysis. And they want to make sure the model analysis will cover the frequency we interest to. And after that, we can do the, the frequency response or harmonic analysis is 1G. Then one after finish this process, we have uh, the result file from, uh, from FEA. And ANCO can check the results. And of course, we need to uh, uh, do the, I mean, the input uh, material properties. Pretty much it's a, it's a stress life. And uh, we set out the vi vibration loading. And uh, voila, and we can, uh, after pretty quick, and we can get uh, the life. For the science suite, for science suite, the life is uh, the, the repeats. Uh, how many suite? Or ba basically, it's how many repeats. And for PSD, it's uh, in seconds. It's uh, exposure or the duration. And uh, after that, we can do the evaluation. Well, if a uh, satisfied life is good, everybody happy. If not, we have to go back to the go back to the redesign process, come over again, either redesign the parts and find why the parts has failed. Yeah. And uh, well, even the past the, the CAE process, we still need to do the, the lab test. So it's a physical test to make sure, make sure that I mean the, this compromise I and mean not compromise to make sure is that the solid, robust design. We're satisfied the CAE and uh, in the real, real test. And a little bit inside of uh, the science sweep in the PSD. And for example, this this is a test criteria. Is a frequency sweep. 10 to 55 hertz, sweep rate 5.4 octaves per minute, and the acceleration at the frequency is a 1.3 G at 20 hertz, 9 G at 55 hertz, and the uh, initial goal for this one is two hours in the three directions. Of course, I mean that you can extend to I mean many hours as you want. And uh, first of all, you need to calculate how many uh, octaves, I mean, in the frequency. Basically, if, if, you, do, if you don't know the formulas, pretty much just like, uh, for example, this one, 10, and the next one with 20. And 20 to 40 is another octave. But we do have uh, the formula to calculate how many octaves. Will be natural log and the higher frequency, 55, and minus natural, natural log. In 10 and divide by log 2. So calculate is 2.459 from 10 to 55 hertz. And uh, you know, we know it's uh, 5.4 um, octave per minute. So it's easy, you can calculate. I mean, one repeat, you can how many seconds. So for this one is 27 seconds. So if our goal is uh, two hours, that means uh, 72, I mean 7,200 seconds. That means uh, 267 repeats. So this is our goal. So from our analysis, we just said this is our threshold. 277 repeats. In the for the for the settings, the first one, as I mentioned, uh, this one has uh, we can take a bulk pretension. So first, first one, first tab. First tab, uh, we take a FRF, which is a nature. I mean, a harmonic analysis from FEA. So it will be one G. In the second tab, second tab uh, is the uh, offset the low cases, which we we connect uh, with the preload. The third one will be our, uh, I mean, uh, the profile, either PSD or science week. And uh, this is uh, 
the connection, the sample connection of analysis. Well, the challenge, challenge of this uh, analysis is uh, the, the solving times. Well, I should say it's, it's not, not as long, but in order to get uh, the results, you have to do the FBA. So FBA, I mean, it's because uh, by nature, you have to do it from the preload with the model analysis and harmonic analysis. So actually, it create a huge data. And the solving time could be long. And the size of uh, the file is huge. So the loading time to the ENCO is pretty long. And uh, another challenge is you need to do a little bit of the math. So it's not really, say, you can just straightforward. And so you need to do a little bit of math so you understand the, what's the result, how to interpret it, and interpret the, the results. So the how is ENCO interpreted as a solution? We uh, integrate the ENCO as our uh, design process. So you can see, from design to product, uh, we use the ENCO to uh, I mean, to evaluate our results. So it means we can uh, reduce reduce the physical test. We don't need to do a, every time we have a design, we don't need to man manufacture it. We can, uh, we can just do it, I mean, uh, do the digital prototyping. So the value created, we have a repeatable processes. They're pretty robust. So every time you do it, pretty much follow the same process. So completely eliminate any any parameters, I mean, it's, it's, it, we, we don't want it. And of course, reduce the physical, test the costs, and uh, pretty much reduce the design cycle time. Simple. Thank you.